India and the US are the highest consumers of calcium supplements and dairy products and we lead the world when it comes to people suffering from osteoporosis and heart disease. Is there a connection? Absolutely yes. For the longest time, for the longest time, the calcium market has flourished and yes, we all need calcium. Pregnant women need calcium, children need calcium, adults need calcium, everyone needs calcium. But the way, the way it's prescribed today, excess calcium in the human body creates innumerable problems. Let's talk about the excessive amount of calcium that people take in the US and India. Dairy, we believe that milk is rich in calcium, which it is, and we consume so much of dairy, we consume so many calcium supplements, and yet osteoporosis is at its highest, and so is heart disease. Is there a connection? Absolutely yes. There's nothing wrong with calcium. But what's missing is a mineral that helps to neutralize it. And it's extremely important for everyone today to understand how calcium works in your body. Because for all of you who are on blood pressure medication, you may find your answer right here today. For all of you who are going through chemotherapy and radiation and prescription drugs which make you feel more tired, which makes you feel more weak, which makes your muscles spasm, you may find your answer right here today. Number one, let's understand how calcium works. The job of calcium is contraction. When you have excessive calcium in your body, it causes contraction in your blood vessels. It causes contraction in your nerves. It causes contraction in your muscles. Now, this is a bad thing because when you have contraction in your blood vessels, your blood pressure automatically goes up. You begin to have heart problems. When you have contraction in your muscles and your nerves, you, you tend to get that tingling pain and then you get diagnosed for something else. You tend to get those cough pains and those cough spasms. You wake up in the morning and your coughs are tight. You're running a half marathon and you've eaten your best. You've trained your best, but you cramp up in your coughs and you're unable to finish the marathon. Again, contraction. There's nothing wrong with calcium, but excessive calcium. Today, almost every woman I know is on a calcium supplement. You deliver a baby, the doctor tells you, hey, be on calcium for the rest of your life. 1,500 mg, 1,000 mg. It's ridiculous. Number one. You're not doing it the right way. With calcium, you need that very, very important mineral called magnesium. Magnesium neutralizes calcium. Understand how this works. If you have excessive calcium, it contracts a muscle. It contracts your blood vessels. But magnesium helps it relax. When there's contraction and when there's relaxing, you contract, you relax, and that activates movement. That activates nerve function. But calcium alone contracts, and that's a bad thing for anybody. But you need magnesium, you need vitamin D, and you need vitamin K2. Calcium without magnesium, calcium without the right amount of vitamin D, and calcium without the right amount of vitamin K2 will cause issues. Right from kidney stones to high cholesterol. Believe me, high cholesterol. I'm going to explain that how that happens. Contractions, nerve pains, spasms migraines, headaches, constipation, you name it. Let's understand how this works. What is the role of this little mineral called magnesium? I always say that you can get one drug for one symptom of a disease, but sometimes if you just replace that one missing vitamin or that one missing mineral, it can take care of over 200 to 300 functions in the human body. Magnesium is one of them. With over 500 different biological functions in the human body, if you have even even 1% less of magnesium in your body, you have innumerable problems in your body. The role of magnesium, it activates your muscles and it activates your nerves. So you could be training at your best, but you have less magnesium and you're going to constantly have aches and pains and then you'll start popping painkillers, you'll start going for physio and a lot of things which are unnecessary and your magnesium deficiency is causing that. It activates ATP. ATP is adenosine triphosphate. It is what produces energy. All of our cells have mitochondria which produces ATP. ADP has to be activated. We may have the best cells in our body in the world, the best quality cells, but you need something to activate it. The same way a bad cell requires activation to express itself into a disease, your good cells need something to activate it, and that's usually a vitamin or a mineral. Magnesium activates ATP, which produces energy in the human body. So if you have low energy, you start eating more food, you start taking unnecessary supplements, you start going from doctor to doctor, because you have less energy, sometimes it's just a deficiency in magnesium. 
and they say over 80 million Americans have a deficiency of magnesium, which is related to your fatigue issues. Again, magnesium is required to digest carbohydrates, proteins, and fat. Let me tell you that again. Magnesium is required to digest and break down carbohydrates, protein, and fat. So it doesn't matter how much protein you're eating, how many carbohydrates you're eating, or how much of fat you're eating. If you don't have sufficient magnesium, you do not break down those macronutrients the right way. So like I always say, it's not about what you eat. It's about how your body breaks down and absorbs what you eat, which explains so many people eating the best of diets and yet they're sick and yet they're fat. And yes, yet they suffer from pains and fatigue all the time because it is about how your body breaks it down. You just don't need a stomach with the right amount of stomach acid to break it down. You need a mineral like magnesium, like your B vitamins that helps break down carbohydrates, proteins, and calcium. And then you need the right gut bacteria in your colon to make sure they get absorbed into your cells. Magnesium helps build your DNA, which makes it my most favorite, favorite mineral when it comes to people fighting cancer or even trying to prevent cancer because it's all about mutated cells, it's all about your DNA, it's all about your RNA and magnesium is required for the synthesis of your DNA and your RNA as well. When it comes to tingling sensations, that numb feeling in your muscles, in your toes, sometimes you think it's diabetes, you go and get all your blood work done and then you have a slightly higher 1A1C and then you're made diabetic. Sometimes all you need is magnesium to take away that tingling sensation and those dull pain, pains that you have in your cough. Let me see. Yeah. So again, excessive calcium. Take calcium, but also make sure you have the right amount of magnesium, D3 and K2. It's a market out there. Everyone, imagine if you can get every woman out there to be on magnesium. Just do the math and see how much of money they make. I'm not against calcium as long as it's done in the right way. Also prescribe magnesium or prescribe K2 or prescribe vitamin D3. And what's one of the biggest problems we have in the U.S. and India right now? People, almost one in two people I meet every day have low vitamin D3 levels, which means calcium, how much ever calcium they're taking, is not being metabolized the right way, which means they have excessive storage of calcium in their body, which is causing contractions in their blood vessels, in their heart, in their muscles, and in their nerves. Now, am I saying you need to take a magnesium supplement or a K2? Absolutely not. Some of the best foods, if you're having a balanced diet, will give you magnesium and calcium and K2 and a little bit of D3 because most of our D3 comes from the sun. Those foods are your nuts, your seeds, your almonds, your walnuts, your pumpkin seeds, your sunflower seeds, everything we talk about, your green leafy vegetables, your sesame seeds. If you don't want to be on dairy, you don't have to be on dairy. Who wants to be on dairy that's contaminated, full of hormones, full of estrogen that creates more and more and more problems? So yes, if you don't want to be on dairy, you can be on calcium-rich foods like nuts and seeds and green leafy vegetables and whole grains. But what do you do if you go ketogenic? What if you do if you go low carb? What if you do if you go low protein and all those fat diets and now you have less macronutrients and you have less minerals and vitamins and that's why you get sicker and sicker. You lose three to four kilos and then you put it all back again and you look older and you're sicker. It's all about balance. Now let's talk about prescription drugs, the number one thing that depletes you of magnesium. Antibiotics, chemotherapy, radiation. Again, you're getting depleted of magnesium. Let's take a patient going through chemo. What are the symptoms? What are the symptoms? Constipation, because magnesium is depleted. Tiredness and fatigue, because magnesium is depleted. And then the doctor makes that careless, stupid statement of eat what you want. Eat your ice cream, eat your sugar, eat your fats, put on weight, become strong. Your body's never going to put on weight because you have a deficiency of magnesium which cannot help you break down carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. So there's no point stuffing yourself with food which further puts oxidative stress on your liver, your kidneys, your colon, and everything else wrecking havoc with your metabolism. What they need to see is that their medication is depleting certain vitamins and minerals, which is why you always have to replenish what your treatment depletes through your lifestyle, through your supplements if necessary, or just through making changes in your diet. So again, look at a cancer patient. They're weak, they have less magnesium. They're constipated, they have less magnesium, which is why when you look at mag um, magnesium sulfate, it promotes a laxative effect, which means a lack of magnesium produces constipation. You take more magnesium, 
You then probably have diarrhea or you break through constipation. What else does it do? Every cancer patient goes through that tingling in their nerves, in their fingers, in their joints, tightness of their muscles, tightness of their calves. And the doctors give them more painkillers, which goes through their liver, which is already riddled with the side effects of chemo, making the patient weaker, destroying immunity, which is the only thing that can give life and quality of life to the patient. What the patient needs is magnesium, which is getting depleted because of the harsh treatment. I'm not against chemo, I'm not against radiation, I'm not against prescription drugs. If it's needed, it can save the life of a patient. But the callous way it's done, without a doctor telling you to change the way you eat, take the vitamins that we're depleting because of our treatment, that's when you care for the patient, that's when you look at them holistically. But they don't study it, and yet they interfere with the eating habits of a patient, telling them, eat what you want, prescribing antibiotics without probiotics, without B-complexes, without the right amount of magnesium. It's a death sentence, like I always say. The treatment will kill you if it is not handled the right way. The treatment will cause your liver to fail, will cause you to go on to dialysis, will cause a cardiac arrest again because you're depleting magnesium. You're constricting your muscles and your nerves. You're causing contractions without relaxation and your blood pressure goes up and all of a sudden you're now put on a diuretic. Let's talk about blood pressure for a while. So now you're extremely stressed. When you're stressed, your adrenal glands produce cortisol your adrenal glands also starts producing high amounts of magnesium because the idea of a magnesium, understand this very carefully because I still tell everyone stress is your number one cause of most of the ailments that you have today. You can blame it on food, pesticides, air, but we're all eating the same food, we're all breathing the same air. There's one step further which we have to embrace. It is called emotional stress, it is called anxiety, it is called your stress and it is real. Understand how this works now. You get stressed, your adrenal glands produce cortisol. It also produces high amounts of magnesium because magnesium relaxes your muscles. Magnesium is required to relax your anxiety and your mood. So while your stress is high, you're burning out magnesium levels. Now you have low, mag you have low magnesium. So your calcium, you're suddenly left with high amounts of calcium in your body constricts your blood vessels. What happens when you constrict your blood vessel? Your blood vessel is this thick, for example, now it's constricted. So this, this diameter has to pump out blood to your heart. What happens? Your blood pressure goes up. So you go to a doctor, you get your blood pressure measured. Now the doctor says, oh, you have blood pressure. Let's put you on a diuretic. A diuretic flushes out fluid from your system, so that brings down your pressure. It also flushes out more magnesium. You go back after a month, your blood pressure is still high. So now the doctor will put you on the second blood pressure medication, which is usually a calcium blocker. And that's a good thing because he knows you have less magnesium, you have more calcium. Calcium is going to pro possibly cause a cardiac arrest, a stroke or inflammation or something to do with your nerves and your muscles, which is why most BP patients complain about spasms and nerve pain and muscular pain. So now you're on a channel blocker with calcium. Your body can no longer absorb calcium, so it can no longer absorb D3, it can no longer longer absorb K2. So now you're deficient, you're malnourished, your cells don't have what it needs to function. And then you're given the third blood pressure medication, all because you were stressed and you had less magnesium. So am I saying that's the only cause? No. Am I saying get off your blood pressure medication and take magnesium? I'm saying no. I'm saying get the point. Understand the concept and understand how real stress is. It's easy for me to sit here and tell you reduce your stress. All of us have stress, me included. But we got to take responsibility and accountability every day and reevaluate and reevaluate how we can reduce it, how we can change our attitude towards it. What are the things we can let go of and accept to reduce stress, which in turn can help us get out of this vicious, vicious cycle of medication. If you're on high BP medication, guess what? You are eventually going to have high cholesterol, which means you're eventually going to be on a statin. A statin and high blood pressure, bad situation very bad situation. You're going to have problems at some point in your life. So a lot of you may already be on that. Am I here to scare you? No. I'm here to motivate you to start making lifestyle changes, get to the root cause and slowly, with the help of your doctor, safely get off those medications. Let's talk about anxiety and depression. You're depressed. You have low serotonin levels. You go to a psychologist or a psychiatrist. Yes, you may need it. You may need it. And you're given a pill that has serotonin. Without magnesium in your body, Magnesium is a precursor to the neurotransmitter serotonin. What do I mean by this? It is required to carry and metabolize serotonin in your brain. Serotonin is produced in your gut. If you don't have magnesium, you can have as much of serotonin as you need in your gut or in the little pills that you take. Guess what? No absorption, 
no bioavailability and the dose gets higher and higher and higher. One mineral, magnesium, can be responsible for so much that we have today. So when we're talking about osteoporosis, is dairy really your solution? Is more calcium really your solution? Absolutely not. You need to have one part of calcium to one part of magnesium. You can't have excessive calcium and less magnesium. The ratio is one is to one and you gotta be eating foods that are rich in magnesium, K2 and getting the right amount of D3. What's best for osteoporosis? The right amount of vitamin D3, yes calcium, but movement, like I always say, movement makes your bones stronger. Pushing your body weight, using your body weight. So either weight training exercises or even doing squats or doing planks or doing push-ups, that makes your musculoskeletal system stronger. That increases your bone density, not calcium. That's your quick fix. We asked for a quick fix, we got a quick fix, and we're paying for the consequences today. We're paying that price. Calcium will never take away osteoporosis, never. It will be your lifestyle, it will be all the changes that you make. I have a whole list. I want to make sure that I've not missed out anything. I think I'm done. So if you've understood this, relate it to your own life. Ditch your calcium supplements unless you have a calcium deficiency. For pregnant women, overdoing it on calcium but no magnesium. Yes, I'm a fan. I would put a pregnant woman on calcium. But I would also put them on magnesium-rich foods. Because you don't want a pregnant woman feeling tired in the third month or the fourth month. And they feel tired. Their legs hurt. Their body hurts. Why? Excess calcium, constriction of muscles, nerves, and blood vessels. So you give them calcium the right way with the right amount of magnesium. Have a great weekend, everyone. If this inspires you and you think it can change someone else's life, share it. We can all impact someone else's life by sharing knowledge all the time. Have a good weekend. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep.